Hello and welcome. My name is Jennifer Ray and in this video I'm going to discuss what we call shoelace pose in the yin yoga style. Now shoelace is a very deep hip opener and so there are a number of modifications that you can use if you have some limitations or mobility concerns. Shoelace is a really great pose to open the outer hips, which is the gallbladder channel in the Chinese system, as well as put pressure into the inner groin or the liver channel. So watch the video to learn more. The posture of shoelace is a deep hip opener in the yin yoga practice. So it helps to create external rotation in the hips and helps to open the gallbladder channel, which runs along the outside of the leg. It also helps to put pressure in the inner groin or the liver channel. Now because it is such a deep hip opener, there are a number of variations that you can use if it's feeling like too much or there's a concern about limited mobility. The first option is to simply take a posture that we could call Sukhasana. You cross one shin in front of the other and gently flex the feet. Notice my feet are pulled out a little bit away from my groin. I keep my feet nice and flexed, I ground my sitting bones, and then I fold forward from here. This will put pressure on the outer hips, just like our full shoelace does. Now, as with any of the forward folding I'm going to discuss today, it's important that you find a forward tilt of the pelvis. So in the forward folding work, what can tend to happen, especially due to things like tight hamstrings, is that the pelvis, the whole pelvic bowl, tilts backwards this way. And over time, this will create strain in the lower back. So instead, we're looking for a forward tilt of the pelvis. The whole pelvic bowl tilts forward as you fold forward. One way you can facilitate this is by sitting up on a prop. So as soon as you sit up on a folded blanket or a bolster, you're able to more easily access that forward tilt. If you are sitting up on something, one thing to remember is to keep the pressure out of the knees and really drop your weight back into your hips. You can do this by bringing your hands to the floor. Then you just press your hands into the floor and you rock the weight back into the hips as you tilt yourself forward. Now as you come into the forward fold, there are a number of ways to support the head. You could just simply support the head in the hands like so. You could use a bolster. And in that case, you would place the bolster right in front of you and rest the bolster just beyond the hairline like so. Okay, so once you have found the posture that works for you, you can hold it anywhere between one to four minutes, depending on what's happening in your body and how long you've been practicing yin yoga. Another option here, so this is the most you know, accessible version. The full version of shoelace, of course, is to cross and place one knee over the other. Now there are a number of ways to enter this posture. The first is simply just coming from a seated position and crossing one knee over. The other option is to come from all fours. So in that case, I come onto all fours, I place my palms to the floor, and then I lift and place the knee over, bring the feet out towards the sides, and then I sit back between the feet. So that can be a nice way to enter the posture. Whichever choice you make there, once you're in the shoelace pose, the knees are stacked, and now there's a tendency for this front hip to pull forward. So you want to pull the hip of the top leg back to create evenness in the hips. Ground the sitting bones, and then from here you can begin to tilt forward as well. Now there are variations. You can experiment with what it's like to bring the feet really close to the body, or bring the feet further away from the body as you fold forward. Some people will find, once again, place, placing some support underneath the sitting bones really helps with the forward tilt of the pelvis as you come down. Other yogis will find that sitting just upright like this is enough pressure on the hips. So you could just stay here and breathe and connect mindfully to the posture right here. Now if you are folding forward, the same goes. You could support the head with the hands or use a bolster in front of you. You can also really allow this whole spine and the back to round forward, dropping the head. And in this case, that will bring the stretch more into the ligaments along either side of the spine or what we call the urinary bladder channel. 
There are other options as well. If you notice that this puts any kind of pressure on the knees, this can be really difficult for the knees. So if, as always, you wanna be sure that you're not creating any pain in the legs and the knees. You may wanna lessen the pressure on the knees by placing some support underneath either the bottom knee, like so, or between, especially if this top knee is really high, you could place folded blanket like so. That could take pressure off there. A few other things to keep in mind for this posture is that after about the first trimester of pregnancy, you don't wanna do a lot of forward folding where there's pressure on the lower belly. So in that case, this posture would not be appropriate. If you'd like to take another variation, especially if the knees are still a concern, you could extend the bottom leg. In this case, this posture is called half shoelace. Now we're opening the outer hip still of the top leg, but the stretch is also coming into the back line of the bottom leg. This is where the hamstrings lie or the urinary bladder channel lies. Now, especially because I'm sitting up on something here, you wanna be careful of hyperextension in the bottom leg. You also want to check out the hamstring of that bottom leg. If you have some limitation or concerns with the hamstring in the bottom leg or hyperextension, you'll want to support underneath the bottom leg. So you could do something like this with a folded blanket. And then from here, you can fold forward without concern for the bottom leg. Okay, so now as I come back up, I walk my hands up and whatever variation you're in, you can simply extend both legs out after all of that external rotation from the shoelace pose and just take a counter pose by placing the feet to the floor and then rocking the knees one side and to the other, returning to some internal rotation. Mm -hmm. You can also just bring the legs right out in front of you for a few breaths and pause before taking your next yin yoga posture. So I hope that helped to explain a little bit more about shoelace pose. Be sure to get over to jenniferray.com and sign up for my mailing list and that way I can keep sending you information and tips and tricks about the yoga practice and yoga postures. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks so much for watching. Mm -hmm.